Our next guest, Jason Wright, runs the website politicalderby.com, and the site ranks the vice presidential contenders based on internet buzz and other news stories, as well as some scuttlebutt that's usually out there in Washington. Jason joins us now from our bureau in D.C. Good to see you this morning, Jason. Good morning. Let's take a look at the, uh, let's start with the Democrats, and we'll run down the top three contenders according to your website. We, uh, we have Senator Evan Bayh in the number one and two spots, and then former Senator Sam Nunn in number three. First of all, Evan Bayh twice. Why? That's how much we like the senator. He is so popular at home in Indiana when he was governor. He had approval ratings as high as 88 percent, almost unheard of even in the heartland. He's incredibly popular. He's very, very good on the stump. He's moderate and he's young. And I think that that uh, might be something that would be appealing, sort of a, a youth ticket uh, on the Democratic side. We were hearing some jokes among our political reporters that Sam Nunn is perhaps the Susan Lucci of vice presidential uh, <laughs> picks. Always mentioned, doesn't always win, doesn't always actually get the nod. Yeah, you know, he's also a, a good moderate choice, I think. Uh, maybe a little bit more of a dark horse, but more and more I hear buzz around his name. Maybe it's being somebody that fits somewhat the insider mold and that he does have many years in Washington, D.C. earlier in his career. But in the 10 years he's been out, he's sort of reinvented himself a little bit and maybe could come in as a bit of a, an outsider, a voice of the people. Why isn't Hillary Clinton on the list? Because I think that Hillary brings too much baggage. Uh, he's like 6'4", he used to be President of the United States. Um, I think that's a big problem for Senator Clinton. Um, I think maybe in the back of Brock's mind, he wouldn't mind having Hillary on the ticket, sort of that whole unity factor they talked about. The problem is Bill Clinton, that close to the White House, that close to the press pool, I think that creates real problems for a President Obama. All right, let's uh, move on to the Republicans right now, and we'll take a look at the uh, top three picks. You have at number one, Governor Mark Sanford out of South Carolina, Mitt Romney, number two, and uh, Governor Bobby Jindal of Louisiana. Let's talk about Mark Sanford. Uh, he's not necessarily well known on the national stage, but you says he has strong. You say he has strong conservative credentials. Absolutely, that maybe the strongest conservative credentials of anyone that even ran for the top of the ticket. This guy is incredibly popular with the conservative grassroots. He's the name that we hear most often at politicalderby.com as someone that the run-of-the-mill grassroots conservative around the country would like to see in the number two spot. In fact, a lot of folks really wanted to see him run for the number one spot. So I think he would be the best pick if Senator, if Senator McCain wants to sort of appease maybe uh, the grassroots of the party. Let's talk about Mitt Romney. How uh, successful usually is somebody in a, in a vice presidential bid uh, when they really couldn't get their own campaign off the ground in the primary? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Uh, history hasn't always been kind uh, to, the, to the number two picks when they ran and lost. Sometimes they look a little bit like a loser. There's a little bit of that a stain maybe on the brand. On the other hand, McCain does need the economic credentials, and Romney, as I like to say, has street cred uh, when it comes to economics. Everyone knows what he's accomplished in the private sector, and I think he would bring some balance to the ticket, and he can raise a whole lot of cash. All right, before we go, let's do a couple of do's and don'ts about picking a VP. Tell us what uh, you recommend the candidate do. Oh, I think that more than anything else, the candidates have to pick someone they're comfortable with, that they have chemistry with. If you look back at 2004, often when you saw John Kerry and John Edwards on stage together, I felt like it looked maybe as if John Kerry were having some sort of a painful uh, medical procedure done on his face. He just didn't look very comfortable at Senator Edwards' side. Uh, the other thing I think that's really important is to pick someone that you genuinely would like to spend time with, because you're going to spend a lot of time together over the course of the next several months yeah, on the trip. Yeah, you sure will. And you say don't uh, pick someone because you expect them to carry their state, because that doesn't always work or rarely that's works. Right. And also don't pick someone with more star power than you. You don't want to get overshadowed there. That's right. And for Senator Obama, that's probably not an issue. He'd probably have to pick Hannah Montana to find someone with more <laughs> star power right now. But maybe for John McCain, something to consider that he may, might not want to pick somebody who looks a whole lot better on camera than he does and who reminds voters that maybe they would have liked to have the number two guy as the number one guy. Now you're speaking to Mitt Romney there as well. All right, very interesting. Jason Wright, founder of politicalderby.com. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we'll save the tape and see if your predictions were correct. Thanks. Thank you.